Welcome to another day in war without end. This is the Outer Heaven Armory. I'm Pliskin, and today's weapon is the M37. The Ithaca M37 is a pump action shotgun. It's American made, designed by John Moses Browning himself, considered by many to be a forefather for many modern weapons. Production began in 1937 and still goes on to this day. Depending on the magazine tube configuration, it can hold anywhere from 4 to 7 rounds of 12 gauge. It is the longest production run for a pump action shotgun in history. Up until 1975, the slam fire variations were common. Slam fire refers to when you can hold the trigger down on a pump action shotgun and fire shot after shot by simply pumping the shotgun. Its loading port is also its ejection port located on the bottom of the gun which makes it handy for left-handed shooters, because unlike modern-day shotguns, the shells aren't coming out of the right side. It's a respected weapon due to its reliability, which is directly related to the fact that its loading and ejection port is the same thing, located on the bottom of the gun. It makes it significantly harder for dirt or other features in the environment to ingress into the weapon system. It was nicknamed the Feather Light, because some variations could be as light as 5 pounds. Snake can first find this weapon in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater during both the Virtuous mission and Operation Snake Eater. It comes in the compact stakeout version which has the stock and barrel sawed down to make it more compact and easy to use in smaller spaces. From a purely aesthetic perspective, this shotgun here sticks out in comparison to a lot of other video game pump action shotguns because Snake doesn't bother to manually insert his shotgun shells into the weapon. Instead, he opts to use a speed loader. Speed loaders are usually seen in competitive shooting, where the objective is to be as accurate and as fast as possible. And anyone that's done competitive shooting can tell you, one of the things that can screw up a clean run is your reloads. If you botch a reload, it can cost you a lot of time and shotguns are notoriously difficult to reload quickly and effectively. So a speed loader allows you to mitigate the time lost. In Snake Eater, it doesn't really seem to speed up the process that much, as Snake still takes his sweet time to insert the shells into the tube, remove the loader, and cock the shotgun into the ready position. While speed loaders are undoubtedly competent in competitions, I doubt its practicality in actual combat as those sticks that you see Snake carrying around to reload his shotgun are quite bulky and inconvenient to store on you. And if anything gets into them, or if they snap and break when he's crawling, rolling, or jumping, it can cause complications during the reload process. One of the things I really love about the M37 in Snake Eater is that it doesn't shy away from showing players just how powerful shotguns can be. Now, you might not get groups of people flying back like you see here, but it's definitely going to send them falling backwards, it's definitely going to take chunks out of them, and it's definitely going to even the odds when it's just you against a bunch of guys in close quarters. I'd argue this is the best balanced shotgun in the series, as while it gives you a lot of power, there are some limitations. In terms of aiming, Snake will only aim from the hip not allowing you to be as accurate as you could be with rifles or handguns. And the ammo capacity is realistic. In a lot of these shorter shotguns, you're not going to get crazy amounts of ammunition. So the four that you can carry in-game is really nice, because it gives you that power, but you're always fearing that long reload that is to come, which is quite realistic with how shotguns work. If you're like me and you like guns, and you're playing through Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, you might just call up Sigint to hear what he has to say as the team's weapon expert. Ah, I see you got yourself an M37. The M37 is a 12 gauge pump action shotgun. Don't expect any kind of accuracy from a distance, but one blast will send the enemy flying, and it's got some serious firepower too. Good thing to have with you in close range combat. It takes a while to reload, though, so plan accordingly. 
The thing that really distinguishes the M37 is that it's lightweight. It's about two pounds lighter than other shotguns. In fact, it's so light that it's been nicknamed the Feather Light. Yeah, and to top it off, this one's had its barrel and stock sawed off. That's probably a modification to make it easier to wield in the jungle. Those Soviet boys know what they're doing. I guess the other distinguishing feature would be the lack of an ejection port on the side of the receiver. Ambidextrous, huh? Exactly. It's been designed so you can use it left-handed or right-handed with equal ease. But that's not all. The low number of apertures means that it won't get jammed up as much with mud and dirt when you use it out in the field. This weapon is made for the jungle. Good to know. But what are they doing with an American-made shotgun? Good question. I guess they could be doing research on Western weapons, but... Did you ever hear about the SAS using shotguns in the jungle combat in Malaya? Just stories. In the jungle, you're always running into the enemy when you least expect it. The SAS found the shotgun to be extremely effective, delivering massive firepower in a short period of time. Because of that, lately a lot of point men are starting to use shotguns as their weapon of choice. Vogan's men might be trying that tactic out for themselves. Now again, most of what Sigan said was right. I couldn't find anything about SAS using it, but uh, it's not unlikely, as the Ithaca M37 was the go-to pump-action shotgun before more prolific designs like the Mossberg 500 and Remington 870 became a thing. But everything he says about it being ambidextrous, lightweight, reliable, and convenient in its cut-down configuration for jungle or close-quarters combat is absolutely true. Once again, we can give props to the team behind Metal Gear's development that actually did their research into the guns that they were putting into their game. Now this brings us to Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. This is where things get a little weird with this depiction of the M37. The speed loader is still here and even though you can doubt its practicality in combat, I'm not going to deduct points in realism for that. And we do get to see longer barrel variants of the Ithaca, which is always great. However, featuring it with a suppressor and a scope is a little iffy. Now, while if you are rocking slugs in your shotgun and you want to put a scope for those 100 meter shots, I mean, technically you can but you don't really need to put something as ridiculously large as what you see here in game. I think there's some applications with scopes and shotguns for hunting, but I don't know about that because I'm not a hunter. Still, some smaller kind of optic would have worked or hell, even iron sights at those ranges. In regards to the suppressor, I cannot stress this enough, shotguns and suppressors just don't mix. There's not really much of a point in doing it. The 12 gauge is a very heavy, loud round. This is not something you're using to conceal your presence. This is something that you're using when you absolutely want to decimate what's directly in front of you. I will give props, however, to the featuring of the Ithaca 37 as an underbarrel attachment on the M16. Now, while you can put a lot of different shotguns, onto the barrel of your assault rifle, the Ithaca is special in the sense that, again, that ejection port is in the same place as the loading port. So for example, if I was to put a Remington 870 underneath the barrel of my rifle, I would still have those shots coming out on the side, and depending on the position I'm firing in, if I'm prone or whatever's happening, that might create some awkward situations. However, with the Ithaca, the rounds are ejecting directly downwards, so no matter what position I'm shooting from, it's always going to be a comfortable experience. It's cool to see the shotgun show up here again, even if it's a little drowned out and not as clear in its sandbox as the M37 in Snake Eater. The M37 is iconic to Metal Gear Solid. It made a crazy debut in Snake Eater with that speed loader and the power that it shows. It sets a very good example for other games as to how you can balance your shotgun. And while there are some weird things that happen in Peace Walker, it can't change the fact that when I think about shotguns in Metal Gear, the first thing that comes to my mind will always be the M37. Whether it's in my hands as I'm running and gunning evading the enemy, or as I am dreading as enemy strike teams come into the room and shoot me down with it. 
Either way, this is a weapon I take with me on any mission when I need to even the odds. This has been Pliskin, and I'll see you in another day in War Without End. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.